Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 49 of this Flutter course. In previous chapters we've uh, submitted our application to um, App Store Connect and we also briefly talked about the fact that we have a little bit of a security problem in our Firebase uh, Firestore database. So let's have a look at what the actual problem is. So I explained this briefly in the previous chapters but I'll do it again in here. So let's have a look. Um, so if this is our code I'm going to increase the size so we'll see it better. And um, you'll see that when we are working with displaying all the notes on the screen for a user, so for instance, user A has signed into the application. And inside our um, notes view, if you go there, we'll see that we're subscribing to all notes in here in our stream builder. So we're saying we're basically building our entire list view, which is here, notes list view. And we're building it on top of the data that comes from this all notes function, which is at the moment inside our Firebase cloud storage. Okay. However, if you look at this code, you'll see that what it is doing is referring to this notes private um, or this notes local variable which is right here and this notes at the moment is um, pointing to the notes collection and what it does it literally takes all the notes from the notes collection so this this essentially means any user logged into our application is truly retrieving all the notes in the entire database although at the end of that code what we're doing is saying we're okay after we retrieve all the notes from the database then we're mapping them here to cloud nodes so we can consume them locally and right at the end we're saying hey but we're only interested in notes that are for this current user but even though the current logged in user is not going to see all the notes in the database but the current user is reading all the notes in the database and if you perform a man in the middle attack for instance if you're using charles proxy on a computer and then you're uh, using your phone and, and you're using for instance let's say you have charles proxy on your computer and then you're sharing your wi-fi connection from an ethernet connection through wi-fi with an iphone that is running your application if i then sit in the middle with charles proxy and look at all the traffic that's going from your flutter application to firebase then i can actually see you requesting information about all those notes and then those notes coming back to the application so a man in the middle attack could potentially then expose all data in our database or in the notes collection at least so we need to we need to fix this so what we're going to do is by is to start by removing our application from uh, app store connect if you remember in, in the previous chapters we sent our application to apple for review and what i've done in here i've developer rejected this application essentially so let me have a look and see if i can increase the size of the screen so we submitted our application to App Store Connect for review from the Apple um, team, review team. But right before it actually went to review, I refreshed the screen in here and you didn't see this, but I said, remove this application from review. If you remove your own application from review, basically it will become this, it will go to this state developer rejected. So this is basically informing you that, hey, it's not Apple basically rejecting your application. It is you yourself who's done this. So. So I can show you an example how that com uh, confirmation email from Apple will look like. So I'll open it in a separate screen and it kind of looks like this. So I'll bring it to this main screen so you see it as well. Okay. All right. So there we go. So then I received an email from Apple that said the status of your app has changed to developer rejected app name, blah, blah. Okay. So this is the email that you receive. So I need you to basically reject your application, the, the version 1.0 that you sent to Apple because we have security problems with that application, okay? And again, I've mentioned this in the previous chapters. I did this in, on purpose so that we can understand like someone, because this is the kind of stuff that you're gonna go through as software developers. Sometimes you're gonna submit something to, the, to App, Apple or Google and then you understand you made a mistake. So how do you how do you fix that? And I really wanted this to be a part of this, um, um, course so you understand how you reject your application how you fix the problem and how you resubmit the application okay but i didn't want to do it for both ios and android because it just gets um boring if you have to submit first go through the entire submission for two platforms and then to submit again so that's why we first submitted for ios and then we're going to fix it and then once that's fixed we're also going to submit for android okay 
So after rejecting your application, you also need to basically remove your build from this at 1.0. So I, I believe our, I've already done that. Oh, no, I haven't. So it's actually good I haven't done that. So let's go ahead in here in 1.0 and just remove this build. OK, so we say we don't want to submit anything and then press save. OK. All right. Um, and also, as you, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we're going to update this 1.0 uh, version now to 1.1. So let's go and see if you can find that information. So right now, oh, I also saw that I, I got an email from Apple. And here it says, OK, now it's prepared for submission, meaning that it's not developer rejected anymore. And let's just bump this version in here to 1.1. Point zero, okay, and then I'm going to save it. Well, and here, I mean, this is kind of like a, a it depends on your taste. If you want to resubmit 1.0, you're more than welcome to do that. But it's usually if you change something in your code, then it is usual for you to go and update this um, uh, minor version. And it's called so because this first version is the major version. So if there's a huge future in the application, and this is the um, minor version, and here is a patch. I mean, you could argue that we could I essentially maybe change our application version to 101 because this is a patch, but I just choose to do 110. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm assuming that you're doing the same thing because there's some information I'm going to provide to you a little bit later in this chapter that relies on you having actually changed your app version to 110. Okay. So that's that part is done. What we need to do now is to go as a caption in case we're going to go clean all the nodes and users in our Firestore database. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that to work. So my notes, Flutter project. So that's in your Firebase console. And I'm going to go first to authentication to users. There's just one user in here. I'm just going to delete that account. OK, then I'm going to go to Firestore database. And there's pr probably two notes in the notes collection. And I'm going to delete them as well. So delete documents there and then delete this document as well. OK, so we have a clean slate, no users and no notes in the database. So you may be wondering, well, if we have security problems with our database, shouldn't Firebase be intelligent enough to know that? And Firebase is actually intelligent enough to know that. And sometimes you will receive emails from, I mean, depending on the security holes in your database, you will receive emails from a Firebase telling you that, hey, there is something wrong with your security rules. And I've prepared some email that, that kind of indicates that. I just wanted to show you how that kind of email looks like. So you can see if you have security issues with your Fire, Firebase um, Firestore database, you may receive something like this. You see, it says, we've detected the following issues with your security rules. Any user can read your entire database. So. It kind of looks like this, okay? So just know that if you receive an email like that, then you know at least the reason for it, okay? And if you're wondering more about like security rules and how you have to configure them, although I'm going to tell you how we're going to configure our security rules in this chapter, but if you're wondering how to do that on your own and you're curious about reading more about it, I've prepared a little link here. So let me see if I can actually bring it um, to the screen um, by opening a link and it kind of looks like this. So you see Firebase, Google, Com, Docs, Firestore, Security Rules uh, and Conditions. So, and so you can read about this. And I did that, and I got a lot of inspiration from how to uh, fix our security uh, problem in our Firestore database. So I strongly suggest that you actually read this documentation. You don't have to do it right now, but please just at least um, bookmark this page so you can come back to it later. OK, so now to the point, let's go and fix our security issue in our Firestore database. OK, so I've also prepared here how we have to actually do it. And you can see that the, let me actually bring up our security rules. So go to Firestore database tab in your Firebase console and then go to rules. OK, let's have a look at our rules at the moment and how they're set up. So the way it's set up at the moment, you can see it says match any database and any documents. OK, and that's what we're doing here as well. And it says match any document in there. So at the moment, we're allowing read and write access only if you're authenticated. So OK, so let's just for now say we are allowing create if you're authenticated. So we say you should be able to create a node as long as you're authenticated. So let's say create. And you can see we get some help from Firebase as well in here. OK, so that's that. So creation. And then we say allow, read, write, and update 
Okay, and this is the rules that we're going to write in here. You can see read, update, oh, actually read, update, and delete. So, so read, update, and delete. And the way we have to set it up is, of course, as you can see in here, what I prepared is we first need to make sure anyone who tries to read from our database or update the database or delete the document should be authenticated. So let's go in here and say, okay, if authenticated, we're bring that code up here, okay? But we're also going to add some more information to it. And the information should like look like this. You can see in this document in here, uh, you may be like, okay, but how do I know? Um, because, okay, before I actually say that, what we want is for the currently authenticated user ID to only be able to access his or her documents that have the same user ID. Remember in our code, we had this user ID field. Let me bring it up here. So if you go to our storage here, we have these constants and we have this user ID field. So every note that we store in our Firestore database has a user ID field. So what we want in here is to basically grab the user ID from the request. So if you say in, in here request, you'll see we have auth path resource. So let's go off and then you'll see there's something called a UID and that is the user ID. Okay. So if we have a look how we have to actually do that. So we're saying user request auth UID should be equal to resource data user ID. And this resource is the current resource that the user is trying to access. Okay. And if you read the documentation that I provided to you earlier, you'll, you would know this. So let's go in here and say, okay, the request auth UID should be equal to resource data dot user ID, because that's the field that we provided, um, as you saw in the code here. So let's then, um, yeah, I think this is good to go. So we could then publish these changes and it says publish changes can take up to a minute to propagate. And that's completely fine because we're actually going to take some time in order to update uh, our code as well. Okay. So that's our security rules. So let's, let's just make sure that they look like this and I'm going to actually bring it to two lines so you can see it in its entirety. Um, if you need to get some, um, inspiration from this. You can also build on top of this, to be honest with you. You can add more security to this. So you're more than welcome to. Um, then what we need to do is start cleaning up our code on the Dart side. So on the Dart side. So uh, let's have a look at this code that we've written in here. I'm going to change the screen layout a little bit so you see it better. So let's go to this function, get notes, and you may have noticed it, but get notes at the moment, we're not using this function at the moment. So we're only using all notes. So let's go ahead and just remove this get notes from Firebase Cloud Storage, okay? Just like that. And I'm running the application at the moment. So let's just command S and I can see there's no problems because no one is actually using get notes and there's no uh, errors in our code. You can see there's no files or folders that are marked as red. So um, so that's that one. That was one of the things that we had to do just to remove the get notes. And then what we need to do in here is to ensure that our, when we actually say all notes that we are filtering the snapshots before we actually read them. So let's just go in here and say notes. And before snapshots uh, like this, I'm going to say where and you can see it says, okay, which field are you looking for? Then we say owner, user ID, field name. And that should actually be is equal to, and we have the owner, user ID, right? So that's that one. And then after that, we say snapshot and snapshots map. And that's also fine, actually. So and to be honest with you, we could clean this code up as well. So let's just say in here, uh, we take this and we say this is our notes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Say final notes is equal to that for all notes. And we could just return it. All right. So now we have this. And you could basically argue saying that, okay, we have a work clause in here. So we don't have to have this work clause in here. And I would actually say, yeah, that does make sense because yeah, why would we have two work clauses? So let's just remove that work clause and put the semicolon in here. 
Okay, so we filter before we read all the snapshots. All right, we're getting an error in here. Let me see what the problem could be because there's a map. All right, so your code basically should look like this right now. And what we can do now is to actually put this to test to make sure everything's working as expected. So I'm gonna bring our iOS simulator in here, which the application is running on already. Gonna do a hot restart and let's just register a user. So I'm just gonna say uh, van.np at gmail.com, foo bar pass, and please don't use this uh, password. Say register, and then it says verify email, okay? Um, let me go ahead and bring up my mails and have a look at my email and see if a verification email has been sent to me. And uh, we've sent an email verification. Please open it to verify your account. And I hope I actually entered my email correctly because I haven't yet received a verification email. So perhaps I could open up Gmail in a separate tab because I'm using Gmail at the moment for that particular user and see if that email has appeared in my Gmail inbox, okay? I'm gonna switch users. All right, let's see. And this is, I'm doing this on a separate screen, so that's why you're not seeing any of this happening. Um, I can't see really any email at the moment, so um, let me go ahead in our Firebase console in here. So um, let's go here and let's go then to authentication and I can see that there is a user here and that is actually correct, but I don't see any verification email being sent to me. So let's go ahead and have a look at our register view and let's have a look at the button implementation if we actually forgot to do something. So when we pass this register event, you can see auth event register, then we have to go to our auth block and have a look at how we've implemented implemented that. I can see that we say create user and then we're awaiting on the provider send email verification. So it seems to be working fine. However, I still haven't received any verification email and that's why I'm just going to say send email verification here on this screen. And by pressing that, I'm just going to refresh my emails and now I can see I received a verification email. I'm going to bring it here, tap on the link and I can see that I saw this. Um, I can see that uh, your email has been verified, was displayed to me. So that's great. Let's go ahead now and um, go to the application and I'm gonna restart here, go to the login page and I'm gonna log in with that user, foo bar baz, log in with the user and no problems. I can log into the application, press the plus button and I'm gonna say my first note, okay? That's saved. And then I'm gonna save my second note, all right? and that is also saved, then I'm gonna log out and try to log back in with another user. So let's register a new user, because remember, we deleted all our users from Firestore database. So Fubar Baz, again, please don't use this password. And I'm gonna have a look at my emails then. And I can actually see a new verification email was sent to me. So that's perfect, I'm gonna bring it here. Uh, if I can open that email, it looks like this. I'm gonna verify my user. Great. Then I'm going to restart the process and try to log in with that user. Okay. Foobar Baz. Log in with the user and I can't see Van Dot's uh, note. So I'm going to say uh, another first note. Another first note. And create a new note, say another second note. All right. So after these two users have created their own two individual um, nodes, let's go ahead in our database, refresh the users. We can see there are two users in here, one starting with PG, which is this pixelity, and then there's a 9V, which is the other user. Okay. Let's go to our database and see how many nodes we have. And we can see we have four nodes, 9V, 9V, which is for the Vandat user, and then we have two um, documents created by... Uh, the Pixality email, which start with the user ID of PG, as you can see in here. And they they have full access to their own documents. So now this user, you can actually go and delete this document, for instance, another first note. So he can go and say, okay, I want to delete this note. So boom. And you can see it just immediately got deleted from, from Firebase as well. So they have full access to their own notes, but they have absolutely no access to anybody else's notes. All right. So that's working fantastically. 
if that's even a word, fantastically. So the next thing we need to do now that we fix this is to go ahead and update the build number in our pop spec YAML file. So now I'll show you this. Let's go to Visual Studio Code to our code right here and then say pop spec um, YAML. And you'll see on top of this file, somewhere around here, we have this version at the moment. This is 100 plus one. But what we want to do in here is just to, is to say it's 110 plus one. So we're updating our build number in here as well. Okay. So after doing that, since it's such a big change, you could perhaps look at your terminal and see and do a git status. And you can see by updating that build number in here, um, it didn't immediately update the build number for our application because had it done that, it should have also been updated for our iOS application in the info plist file. So that unfortunately wasn't updated. And because of this, it's probably a good idea to issue flutter clean. So I'm gonna bring the code like that. Let's just say flutter clean, okay? That's gonna do its work. And let's say flutter pop get that and all right that's doing this we're going to say git status let's have a look at our status and there's still nothing changed so let's just say flutter run ios and see if that's going to listen okay flutter run because that's our default target at the moment is an ios simulator so maybe flutter run will just accept multiple devices found all right show us the list of devices please <laughs> perhaps it's having oh now it found it please choose one okay i want to choose the iphone 13 pro so i'm gonna choose um iphone 13 pro number two in here okay so now it's gonna build the project with xcode build and in my experience these days xcode, xcode build has been it's just horribly slow so i'm basically gonna stay quiet now let it do its work and when it's done we will continue with the video all right as i suspected this process actually took a very long time and i think we could actually see in here that the xcode build took 164 seconds it is well i'm not going to go into that it's a long time um so let's have a look now if the version was actually updated correctly. So I'm going to go another, into another shell in here and let's say git status. And I still don't see any info plist files have been getting changed on the iOS side. So I'm just going to be curious here and then go to the iOS file in here and have a look at the Xcode workspace. And let's have a look at the version in here. Well, the version does seem to have been updated. So it's 110. That's exactly what we specified in our pop spec YAML. So that's you making sure that this file is updated. And if you don't have Xcode, so if you're, for instance, running on Linux, uh, Ubuntu or something, and you want to still check whether the version number was updated for the iOS application, you can always do that by opening up this file info plist inside iOS runner. And then you can have, I believe, you could have a look at your Flutter build number in here. And let's see if Flutter build number is set somewhere. So that one, that one. I don't actually see the Flutter build number being set anywhere. So if we search for 110, actually, let's search for 110 in the entire application. And the only thing I can see in here are like some of our pop specs. And 110 in here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not going to work. So I don't really know the magic behind how the Flutter team has actually injected that 110 into. It's probably some sort of a build variable. So if you want to get into details about that, perhaps we could just open Xcode and have a look at that application. Let's go in here into build settings and have a look at a version um, and see if there's any 110 in here. Flutter build name, exactly. So that's that's how they're injecting it. They have a user-defined variable called Flutter build. And Flutter build the name is then being injected for our info plist. So if you go here, you can see, oh, this is a Flutter build number. So yeah, but anyway, it's, this, this must be a, a, a variable that the Flutter team has injected into the Xcode build somehow, all right? But bringing up Xcode could confirm that the version number is set to 110 correctly. So that's all we needed to do. 
Then the next step for this chapter for us is to make a build and send it to Apple this time. So um, not this time, we did it the previous time as well. We sent it to Apple. So what I'm going to do is uh, I need to bring up Xcode again. I shouldn't have closed it maybe. Let's go in here. And while we're in there, we could just go and say we're building for any iOS device. And then I'm just going to say product archive as we've done in the previous chapters as well. So let it do its work. Okay, now our build <clears throat> has been um, created by Xcode. And in here, it's very important that you actually check that the version number in here uh, corresponds to the version number that you've created in App Store Connect. And just a reminder in App Store Connect, if you go back there, you can see that the version that we prepared is 110. And that's why I said in the beginning of this chapter, it's actually important for you to follow the same versioning that I'm doing in, in the current chapter. So let's say 110, and I'm going to say distribute to Apple or distribute app upload and let's go in here analyzing app version fetching app store configuration and i'm going to uncheck manage version and build number because i want flutter to be able to do that and then i'm gonna choose the uh, production profile that we've created for our application press the next button in here as well and then depending on your network connection and your and different configurations that you have for your network, this process could actually take a very, very long time. Um, previously, when I tried this, I, even, I, even though I'm on a fiber optic net, a network connection with a thousand upload and a thousand download, it still took about 30 minutes for a simple application to be sent to Apple. And it was literally stuck in this requesting app information for more than 20 minutes. So that's an unfortunate fact that we just have to accept and let it do its work. And I will see you then once it's uh, finally sent the application to Apple. All right, so now I can see that our application has been submitted to Apple. And I have to confess that this time it took only about a minute for this process to go through. So that was very fast, much, much faster than the previous chapters. We'd have to submit our application, which took upwards of 30 minutes for me. So now that is done, after you've done this, you will receive an email from Apple that kind of looks like this. If I can bring it to the screen, it will look like this. And it will tell you that the following build has completed processing. Only after this email has been sent, you can go to App Store Connect and go, and, and we also have to fix our missing compliance. So let's just say manage and say, uh, use encryption, no, start internal testing. After you've done that, you need to go to the App Store, uh, uh, how do you say, tab. And in that tab, let's just select a new build and it's our 110 build. And I'm gonna say done in there, okay? After you've done that, you can press the save button and then you can submit your application uh, fresh to Apple. So that then in turn concludes the submission of our app to App Store. And um, if there's any complications with this application, like if Apple for some reason can't register a user or something, they're gonna send you an email telling you about that. So then you need to go through that process and help the App Store uh, review team in order to get started with your application. But if you remember from the previous chapters, we've actually left some information in there, like review information, um, and told the review team how to register for a um, user in our application. So that information should be sufficient for them to understand how to use the app. Fantastic. We're done with the with the uh, submission of our iOS app to App Store. So as usual, since we've now changed our code, let's go into uh, Visual Studio Code. And uh, I'm going to close all these tabs because it's just extremely populated on my screen. Get rid of the Explorer and go to uh, my terminal in here and have a look at our status. And I can see there's only two files changed. So I'm going to add them and let's commit a step. 30, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, okay? So if you look at our logs, we have step 29 and then we have step 30. So I'm gonna say git push, that's gonna push our commit. And let's then tag these, so step 30. And let's just say git push tags. So that is done now. And our tag of 30 is also sent to uh, GitHub. What we need to do now, as usually is tradition, where we talk about what we need to discuss in the upcoming chapters. And in the next chapter, we're going to talk about sending our app also to Google Play Store. We've done it for iOS. We have to do the same process for Google Play Store. So get some refreshments if you want to, and I'll see you in the next chapter.